The cardiac volumes are all centered around the main pump, the ventricle. At the end of the filling phase during diastole, when the heart is at rest, the ventricles are the most full. This is the end diastolic volume. After the ventricle has gone through the systolic phase of contraction and ejecting blood out to the aorta, what is left over in the ventricle is called the end systolic volume. The amount of blood that actually left the heart and entered the aorta is the stroke volume. This is calculated by subtracting the end systolic volume, or what was left over, from the end diastolic volume, or what the heart started with when it was at its fullest. An ultrasound of the heart can measure the dimension of the ventricle and give a value for the end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. Ejection fraction is a term often used to describe the level of function of a person's heart. The ejection fraction is just stroke volume expressed as a percent. Basically, what percent of the blood that the heart started with did the heart actually eject? Cardiac output is how much blood the heart pumps out in one minute. The amount of blood ejected in a single beat is stroke volume. The number of times the heart beats in a minute is the heart rate. Multiply these two numbers together and you have the cardiac output. During exercise, cardiac output increases to accommodate the increased oxygen demand by the working muscles. At rest, a normal cardiac output is around 5,000 milliliters per minute or around 5 liters a minute. During exercise, cardiac output can reach 21 liters per minute in an untrained individual or 35 liters per minute in a trained athlete. One big difference in cardiac output is the ventricle size. In trained athletes, their ventricles are bigger so that they have a larger stroke volume. For every beat, this means that their heart does not have to pump as many times in a minute to get the same cardiac output. Even at maximal exercise with similar heart rates, the trained and untrained athlete eject different amounts of volume, so the trained athlete has a greater output at the same heart rate. The chamber size of a sedentary person has a round left ventricle cupped by the right ventricle. An aerobic athlete like a cross-country skier has a larger chamber size for both the right and left ventricles to move as much blood as possible with each beat. In a weightlifter that does a lot of lifting and holding their breath or at least increased thoracic pressures, their heart walls are much thicker. This thicker wall is also seen in hypertensive patients because the heart has to squeeze harder to overcome the high pressures just to get blood out of the heart and into the aorta. The significant thing with the weightlifter heart or hypertensive patient's heart is that the chamber size decreases which reduces stroke volume. These people will have to have a higher resting heart rate just to maintain the same cardiac output to serve the body with oxygen. Some of the factors affecting cardiac output are the things that affect heart rate and stroke volume. The heart rate can increase with sympathetic stimulation or decrease with parasympathetic stimulation. Many different hormones have cardiac effects. The most common are the sympathetic hormones from the adrenal medulla, epinephrine and norepinephrine, both of these increase heart rate. The thyroid hormone thyroxine or T4 can also increase heart rate. Atrial stretch can also increase heart rate. Stroke volume is affected by how much the ventricle fills or preload. The greater the filling, the more the myocardium stretches, which increases the force of contraction from the myocardium. Afterload is one of the biggest factors affecting stroke volume. The afterload is the pressure the heart has to pump against, which is the blood pressure in the aorta. Cardiac contractility, or the force of contraction by the myocardium, also affects stroke volume. The greater the force generated by the heart, the more volume can be ejected from the heart. The Frank Starling Law of the Heart is the reason behind why the greater the filling of the heart, the greater the force generated by the heart. When more blood fills the heart, the muscle stretches more. This stretch can actually affect troponin inside the ventricular muscle cells, which causes a greater shift in tropomyosin, exposing more active sites on actin, resulting in more crossbridge formation. The more crossbridges you can form, the more force a muscle can make. 
Therefore, instead of relying on the nervous system hormones to increase the contractile force of the heart, just an increase in the returning blood volume or preload to stretch the muscle cells will help the heart to eject more and contract more forcefully. This is one of the main mechanisms people with a heart transplant can adjust their cardiac output during the early phase of exercise before any augmenting hormones such as epinephrine and norepinephrine begin to circulate.